Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at a tiny flash NVMe NAS from IFRO. This is the K100. And if you're looking for a very affordable, uh, small, tiny, all SSD NAS, then this one could be for you. The dimensions are 117 by 112 by 34 millimeters. So a size of a small mini PC. The CPU is an Intel N100. We also have an uh, aluminium alloy made of the actual chassis, but on the bottom there is plastic. CPU is featuring four cores, four threads with six megs cache, and it has a peak clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz. It comes with Intel Ultra HD graphics, 12th generation, and the memory in here is LPDDR5, eight gigabytes at 4800 megahertz, that is unfortunately soldered to the board, so you can't upgrade that. There is no Wi-Fi on here. The storage is four times SSD, which is 2280 uh, M.2 PCI Express Gen 3.2. Uh, so there are the uh, ports which you can put the NVMe drives into. And we have some other stuff on here which we'll take a closer look at. You can pause the screen and read this at your own leisure. So this is everything you're going to get inside the box. When you purchase it, you're going to get your cable. This is about 1.5 meters uh, type C cable here. And this is going to power the actual device itself with the little power brick that you have there. The power brick on this one is a two pin, but they will send you a three pin if you're living in the UK. I'm pretty sure you need to check that just to make sure, but they did send me this uh, particular version right here. I'll quickly show you uh, the specifications on the power adapter here so you can see it there we go that is 12 volts 3 amps output and a pretty decent low power uh, draw on this 65 watts maximum on this particular device which is pretty good uh, for a NAS system so that is your adapter there for the actual device we also have a user manual here, an installation manual, how to install all of your drives, but I'll show you that. It's very simple and easy to do, but there is some diagrams in here to help you understand how to install a M.2 drive here. So you just need to remove the bottom. Now they do a bare bone system where you don't get a drive installed, but this one had 256 gigabytes uh, drive installed on here on one of the slots. And there was an operating system on here, but you can install a bunch of different operating systems like TrueNAS, FreeNAS, and other versions like Windows, Linux, and stuff like that. We've got some ventilation and a power button on the front here, ventilation on the other side, and this is where all the action happens on the back. That top ventilation is your exhaust area. We do have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. There's only one Ethernet port on here. We have that 1.4 uh, HDMI port on here, and also two uh, type C USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports on here and two USB 2.0 ports, not 3.0. Uh, these are 2.0 ports on the back. And we have that DC in, which is going to be powering your device. We will take a quick look inside the actual unit here to show you how to insert the drives and how to set it up. I'm not going to show you how to install an operating system on here. There is an operating system on this one, but I'm going to show you basically how to install the drives and then I'll show you what you can install. You can put Casso OS and things like that. Now, the price for this one is £325. Everyone complains about the cost of NAS drives, but this is pretty affordable at £325, all SSD NAS. And again, this is the way things are going. It's a very small footprint. It's a tiny little NAS. Uh, mainly, it's a mini PC, but it's been converted into a NAS by the looks of it, as you'll see inside, because most mini PCs nowadays will look like this and it's just been converted into a NAS which I think is not a bad idea so you're going to need to remove the actual rubber feet on the bottom there's no easy access to this version and uh, once you remove these rubber feet it'll give you access to the screws and then all you need to do is unscrew these four screws and then remove the plastic bottom part this is plastic now there is a VESA mount option available for this particular unit as well uh, they didn't send me the VESA mount, so you can VESA mount this. This is inside here. We have a green PCB here. Four M.2 slots, but one of them's populated with a 256 gigabyte uh, drive here. You can replace this to a larger size drive if you want to. The fan is on this side here, pushed up against here and exhausting through this area here. So this device needs to be cooled uh, properly, otherwise you're going to end up with... Uh, heating issues under here is your CMOS battery 
there is no Wi-Fi card on here. I think they could have installed a Wi-Fi card underneath that drive bay there. Whether you need a Wi-Fi, I really don't know, but a lot of people might have wanted that option. So again, if you want to erase the uh, drive, you can do and put your own operating system on here, which is what I'm going to be doing myself. I'm going to quickly populate these drive bays with some drives. Now, again, you can put larger drives in here if you want to, but for testing purposes, I'm just going to put these free one terabyte drives in here from Western Digital. So again, let me just screw this down. Now, I'm going to be putting some thermal pads on here. The thermal pads didn't come in the kit. It would have been nice to see those because if you are populating drives, you are wanting to uh, keep those as cool as possible. And especially on top here, yes, it's going to be pressing up on that plate. They do apply one little thermal pad for their actual drive, but there's no other spare ones ready for you to put your thermal pads on your drives. So when I press this down, this uh, plate here is going to be pushing up onto the thermal pads and help dissipate the heat from the actual drives itself. So I think it's advisable to use thermal pads. Let me go ahead and put these four screws in here for the top plate, and then we can put the plastic bottom plate on and screw that down as well. And then we can go ahead and install some operating systems. Now, depending on which way you want to go, there's plenty of options available. You've got CentOS. You can put Open Media Vault on here. You can put FreeNAS, TrueNAS, Windows 11, Ubuntu, uh, just about anything you want on here, really, and get this up and running to run this as a server. I haven't tried Proxmox or Unraid on here, but I'm pretty sure it will run those as well. Now, again, depending on what you want to do, I just put uh, Nextcloud on here first, and then I did Casa OS just to test and again, it worked perfectly fine with these particular uh, operating systems. It depends on the way you want to go about it. I did install Ubuntu Server on here, and then I put Nextcloud on here as well. So I was running the uh, Ubuntu Server version on this particular device for my testing. But again, depending which uh, way you want to go about installing your um, operating systems on here, you can do. Let me know what sort of projects you would like me to uh, do with this particular device if you want to see more on this i'll be happy to make those videos for you again this is a review this was sent to me by the company for review all my opinions are my own no one is reviewing this video before it's released so i do think it's actually a very nice little system uh, because uh, a lot of people want something a very affordable and a lot of people will go down the Frankenstein type route where they've got a, a, a Raspberry Pi and a bunch of hard drives and it can get a bit messy. This is really self-contained and pretty tidy and you can vest amount this to wherever you like, uh, you know, on the back of a monitor and keep it out of the way. Or you can just put it up on the, your router and have it sit in there and sharing files across your network. You can run Plex on here. You can pretty much do whatever you like with this particular device. So this is uh, Nextcloud. Let's move on to Casa OS. And I'll just uninstall uh, Nextcloud on this uh, Ubuntu server here and quickly install Casa OS. There we go. And we are done. We are now just going to set up Casa OS. Again, you can run TrueNAS on here if you wanted to, if you want to have more control and have some sort of RAID setup you could do. Uh, but we're just going to be putting Casa OS on here and we can basically use this as a simple file sharing on our system here and install a bunch of different apps which it has available uh, to us on this particular type of operating system. It's very simple and easy to use. If you're just getting into this sort of type of thing like NASIs and things, it's quite easy to understand this interface here. So there is our drives right here and you can create some storage pool here and away you go. So we do have drives on here as well. Let's just quickly take a look at the drives. There they are right here. And again, these can be larger drives as well. I'm not sure what the maximum capacity for this particular board is. You would have to check that out. Um, they didn't have any sort of information on their website, but these are one terabyte drives. So you could set up a terminal here where you could access it from here from your computer and you'll be able to do all of your work from terminal if you wanted to. And you can also do it from here. So you can remove the keyboard and mouse from the actual unit, leave it in a corner somewhere and sit in there 
running and it's not using a lot of system resources as you can see but remember you won't be able to upgrade the memory on this so maximum is eight gigabytes of memory and it is soldered mounted to the board here which is unfortunate so let's take a look at what else you can do with this if you wanted to install some apps on here like i said there's the app store here you can go through here and install jellyfin plex or whatever it is you want to do on your system and you can get up and running let's just do something simple here and do some sort of file drop uh, application and i'll show you basically where you can just drop files onto here and and share it with someone and basically allow them to download it straight from your server very simple and easy to do you've got home assistant here a bunch of different stuff on here and again you don't have to go down this uh, route where you're in installing Cas os you can install just just about anything you want on here and make it your own so let me just go ahead and quickly set this up and we can take a look at it so we've got file drop installed on here i'll quickly open that up you can see there's no files that have been found you can create a folder and then you can basically share uh, this file here you can see i've got true nas up here ready to go because that's what i'll be installing on this next and again i can download this and share a link and people can download it and share that file very easily across the network or even outside your network so very simple and easy to do so whether you want to set this up for some sort of file sharing or home media server or some sort of lab where you can install uh, virtual machines or whatever it is you want to do on it you've got the option here with this particular device uh, pretty nice and small and compact very low power draw as well so it does tick a lot of boxes and uh, again i'll leave all the information and links in the video description my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.